Hello friends, my name is Catherine and welcome to Storytime. Let's start with our welcome song. guest singer today and that's my daughter and hi to your families if they're there singing with you as well let's start story time today with a song why don't we sing about these friends who've joined us today who do we have here we have a long red shiny snake and a lion ready for adventure and this sweet little teddy bear who loves hugs let's start by singing about the snake here we go. saying a lot of different kinds of sounds. Well, why don't we start with a story today about another teddy bear. This one's called Corduroy. Story and Pictures by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy! She said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone home and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. 
all at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until, pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled, bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I captured what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be a home, he said. I know, I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like the way you are, she said but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The, the end. I hope you enjoyed that story. Well, in Corduroy, he got into an adventure because he was trying to replace that missing button on his overalls. Well, I have a rhyme about somebody who works in a button factory. I'll need your help though. You're gonna do a little movement. I'm gonna snap out the rhythm, okay? Here we go. Hello, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. She said, turn a button with your right hand. Okay, turn the button, guys. Hello, my name is Joe, and I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, no. She said, turn a button with your left hand. Here we go. Hello, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, Are you busy, Joe? I said, No. She said, Push a button with your right foot. Okay, we got this. Hello, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, Are you busy, Joe? I said, no. She said, push a button with your left foot. Okay, here we go. Hello, my name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, are you busy, Joe? I said, 
No. Push a button with your forehead, Joe. Okay. Hello. My name is Joe. And I work in a button factory. One day, my boss, she said to me, Are you busy, Joe? I said, Yes! Oh, no more button pushing. <laughs> Thanks for singing that rhyme with me, friends. Well, speaking of buttons, I also brought along my button jar to share with you today. Whenever I need to replace a button on something that's missing, I dig into this, or sometimes I just dump it out and look at all my buttons. But I also wanted to share some of my favorites. This one is my absolute biggest button that I have. Look how huge it is. Oh, look at these buttons on my sweater. Look how big that is. I also have one that is, what color is that? Red. What's special about this is it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. Look at that. Just like a stop sign. Ooh, and look at this one. I also have a lot of really neat colors. I've got this bright yellow one, shaped like a flower. And then look at this one. It's two colors split down the middle. Isn't that one neat? Ooh, let me share a couple more. A big, bright, shiny, brassy one. And then some that are odd shapes like this. Nice oblong button, kind of like a toggle. Well, for our last story, why don't we read about a little boy who finds somebody's button collection, and it's called The Button Box. By Margaret S. Reed, illustrated by Sarah Chamberlain. My grandma has a special box. I like to play with what's inside. I swirl the buttons round and round. And then I pick the ones I like. Ten have flowers painted on them, just like Grandma's china dishes. I like to sort them first. Next, I look for sparkly buttons. I pretend they're jewels that once belonged to king and queens and movie stars. Some buttons are covered with cloth, satin, velvet, or corduroy. They make me think of fancy clothes. There are metal buttons from overalls and jeans, leather ones from cowboy shirts and sweaters. This looks like one from Grandpa's winter coat. Grandma says these small ones came from shoes worn long ago. Next, I sort the shiny buttons that come from uniforms. I line them up like marchers in a big parade. This one with the eagle I call Mr. President. I pull out all the pearly ones and make a rainbow pattern. When does little change to big? I can never tell. Some buttons have four holes, some two. Some don't have any sewing holes. They have shanks instead. These make good eyes on puppets or stuffed animals. Sometimes when Grandma sorts with me, we play a special game. We stir the buttons, shut our eyes, and then we each take one. Grandma asks, are they alike? Mine is wooden, so is hers. Both are round and flat, but hers is thick and mine is thin. She puts my button on a string. Whirl it around, she says. The string twists up. I pull the ends. We listen to it hum. Grandma tells me what some buttons used to be. Some were seashells, some were even sand. Big furnaces heat the sand until it melts. When it cools, it's glass. Wooden buttons come from trees. Deer shed their antlers every winter and grow new ones in the spring. I like the buttons made from their old horns. 
When it's time to put in the buttons back, I pretend I'm very rich, counting all my gold. I like to feel the buttons then, the bumpy and the smooth. I like the way they sound, clickety-tappity, falling through my fingers one by one into the box. Then Grandma puts the box away where it will wait till next time. I wonder who first figured buttons out. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. So it's time for the end of story time. Why don't we sing our farewell song? We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends. We wave goodbye like this. Thank you for coming, friends, and I'll see you next time.